All right, next up we've got Gareth McFarland. Hey, Gareth. Hi, hey, okay, Chris. How's it going? It's going good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm a 3D artist from Northern Ireland and uh, been working in 3D since the early 90s, working professionally since around 98. Freelanced on from the mid sort of 90s and uh, working mainly interior visualization. And in the last five years, I've been involved working with these guys in Chiang Mai, doing more real time stuff for events and exhibitions and stuff. So. All that was mainly using Maya, so I made the big transition in 2019 over the Houdini and the last year has been, yeah, the whole Houdini learning experience, so it's been it's been great. Fantastic. So what's the presentation going to be doing today? Uh, today I'm just going to be walking through my submission for Mardini Day 7. It's, uh, yeah, just t- taking it through the graph network and uh, just sort of, yeah, an, an A to Z of the, from the rush sketch to the final output. It's, it's quite a... It's quite a small, compact thing, so yeah, hopefully it just gives a nice overview. Excellent. Well, let's jump in. Excellent. Cheers. Hello, everyone. We're just going to dive straight into this. No messing about. So, uh, for the Mardini Challenge every day, um, my approach is just yeah, start with a small sketch or do whatever. This was for uh, stone. Obviously, I was set of stone. Check out a few reference shots, and then yeah, the whole uh, the three languages. That was uh, that's the sort of uh, thing that hooked hooked for me. So you know, with these hieroglyphics, and I was thinking, well, yeah, I mean that could be the test geometry and sort of universal symbols. And then I'd previously done a piece for escape, was it? I think yeah, it was like an axe made of effects, uh, not a good sign. So. Yeah, that sort of led into that, that fed into this project. So I thought, yeah, I'll use the same approach there. And then, of course, all, all binary. And so I thought, yeah, this is, you know, with Houdini, you just you, you want a quick, not quick, you want you want a solid goal. You just want to be able, especially in Mardini, you, I don't know, you get a day at most, but this here was about, I don't know, about two and a half hours, I think, late at night. It's like, yeah, I want to do something. So I sort of like this and went, right, yeah, that, that's, I could visualize how I was going to approach it. Not too complicated, so this will be uh, quite short. Uh, so the first one, I thought, okay, well, let's get in, let's get all the classics in here, and then I'm using very handy node, I use quite a lot, the extract silhouette, which will just, uh, using a plane, just project uh, its silhouette, it just gives you a nice uh, geometry. So just stashed all these, there's a few transforms, the usual sort of Hacking stuff together. Uh, the MOX instancer, I mean, this is not what MOX is really meant for. Well, it's, 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 you can use it for anything, I guess, but it's uh, not exactly using the full power. I, I just use this because, yeah, you can just very quickly throw everything in. Uh, it's grid distribution, get on random. And then the good thing is I can weight it. So we just quickly, well, probability weight, whatever you want to call it, just to allow me to very quickly just get this type of thing here and uh, yeah at this point I'm going yeah all right and then just like obviously they need to be flattened down and then this was like okay we're done move on you know it's more DNA and then this here yeah just getting it sort of uh, skilled down I'll have you unpacking it because I'm uh, so I don't really know much about mobs just bought it actually last month but it looks absolutely amazing Incredible work. Dividing it up, extruding them out, and for whatever reason, I stuck them in a, a loop to, or is it for you? Yeah, just to smack them into the, the Z, Z plane. And then we have here, yeah, so just went on the old dadfont.com, grabbed the, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want anything to, I knew it was going to be a lot, and then it being carved into stone, I wasn't, I was unsure about how much sort of noise and, you know, chiseling, or what you want to call it, like the carving. So I couldn't go too uh, ornate around, so something quite chunky. Threw these in the mobs, and then, yeah, just get a nice bank of, uh, well, I don't know, I'm sure if you know binary, that's something profound, I don't know. Uh, transform, match size again, just slapping it into the, so we're seeing plane and then, OK, 
kind of fun part. Uh, so I went on to CG Wiki, which is an amazing resource. Uh, just grabbed, look, looking at facts for, I was trying to sort of, you know, sort of think, oh, what's going to work and what's going to end. So I thought, just grab a chunk and just die. Right. So it's just literally copy and paste and just a bit of hanging together just to sort of get something that kind of, you know, what wasn't wasn't immediate like, oh, that's fixed, but I did, I did want it to be so subtle, so the density, you know, the, the Rosetta Stone, it's very fine lines, it's, you know, it's a, a lot of information in a small space, so it had to be kind of very, very, very condensed in that way, so threw these all together, and, and then I'm sort of thinking, yeah, I mean, that's, that's doing it for me, you know, the whole, the whole concept is the, the three bands, you know, so stick into that, and it's, you know, that's job done as far as I was concerned. So to get it into sort of the, you know, chiseling end of the stone effect, yeah, I'm going to use the good old high food. Scale it down here so it's only uh, 16 meters by 16 meters and just using the, the axis to control the resolution. And then using a very handy node, high field project, just to get that initial carve into it. And then after any sort of high food project, we tend to use a blower just to, yeah, just soften it out, just to get that sort of uh, high food noise. Now, I had planned to do sort of all these nice sort of thinking, oh yeah, procedural cracks and all, but yeah, not enough time. And then when it did sort of initially play around with the noise, I realized that it has to be legible to sort of get the core concept across, you know, the, the fex Easter egg, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, just very, quite a large, you know, just look nice, just a bit of break up to get with something. And then I uh, needed to cut this out, so I just drew a, just drew a very rough line, fused it, poly extrude, match size, I think, yeah, just to get it in the center of the plane, and then just using that as a, as a cutout, while it cooks, and yeah, we're left with, yeah, and at this point I'm sort of going, yeah, we're flying here. You know, I think it was around, I don't know, 10 in the evening or something, I wanted to get something posted up. Uh, well, usually Martini, that was that sort of midnight was my, my cut off my time. So, uh, what do we have here? So we're going to, right, we're going to pull these from the, the old high feed and get rid of the alpha. I think that had something to do with rendering, because normally I wouldn't really care about uh the alpha music just working for uh, sticking things in the real time. Giving it some depth for the extrude. I think, yeah, just a wee bit of just a mild tweak on the transform. And then this, this is all about just getting it ready for VDB workflow. Watertight mesh. Transform that up, and then we're into the VDB sessions. We've been taking the initial line here that I've done, so this is going to give me a sort of thought. Oh, we can get some nice chipped edges and stuff. The, the workflow, the concept was correct, but it didn't really, yeah, I didn't really uh, drill down into this. VDB it, smooth it, convert it, just sit down here and do. Yeah. Sort of chunk like that, using the scatter to create a bit of funny noise. Assembling it just to give us a uh, this this will be a workflow I see a watch from uh, Rebel by tutorials, but uh, pretty handy you're just using so because they're all just points, then yeah, you're just using the uh, binding. The binding option and a delete node just to sort of uh, quickly grab chunks out of it. Quite sort of yeah, quite brutal. Not a uh, not much uh, finesse around, just tugging along, and then this is a bit of okay. Yeah, I'm not much. I didn't really get. I was planning to do a lot more with these. Again, just sort of was just trying to get get something workable, and then I was going to go back if, if needed or if it was crucial. So get all those in, get them back in the VDB, and then we're combining. Right, so now we have 
you see here, a chunk. I like these here, that's sort of initially sort of thought, eh, you know, this doesn't really make sense, but I sort of thought, yeah. Well, sort of the three band break up, I was starting to think about materials now, so I was thinking, well, yeah, you can have some dark in the, dark in the bottom, maybe some sort of colour here, and then sort of things sort of marble, or yeah, just some sort of, sort of play in, you know, just to. And just to break it up, and so I thought, yeah, these here are nice splotches as they'll do me. Happy accident. Uh, these here were just, yeah, mine spheres. Throw these in, BD paint them. Just so sort of realized there's one of the bit of uh, literally just hacks them, hack in a hacking way. So uh, these here were using a difference just to. Some chunks now. The only thing I didn't really, I wish I had a sort of that edge out, but one of those things, you know. Convert it all here and clipping it. So this is just prepping for output, really, at this point. Get a normal sort of. And branching out into high poly and low poly. Yeah, that's the next stage. I realised I could have done, rather than doing it in substance, I could have done it in Houdini's and Cops, but uh, I hadn't really looked at it. I realised Martini, yeah, you should be trying to do things, but it was a bridge too far, so this was just really the old high poly, low poly back out. I won't go into the auto UV, or else this will be a 25 minute video. Uh, throw material on it, and then once you're in substance, just uh, back out with the high poly normals. And then all it really was was. Bit of slate down the bottom, using these sort of uh, gradient masks just so I have control over where they're being slapped on. So there's the, the top, the bottom, and then, uh, yeah, end up with this nice result. Quite, quite, you know, quite haggy, quite, but you know, I knew, I knew, I knew it was going to be simple. I knew it was going to be just uh, get the three bands, get get some nice uh, edging, you know, because of this very nature of it being carved, you're going to get lots of great curvature and. Uh, Topology, so yeah, and then that was it uh, for that. And then Mantra, I haven't really used. Well, no, I had, I had actually the first thing, first time I used Mantra was the first day of Mardini. So, this, I mean, Jesus, I don't know if this is a what sort of optimum setup there is for Mantra, but this is just bringing the, bring the model in, using quick material to throw in my base color normal, roughness metallic. Sure, there's plenty of other stuff I could do if I knew how to operate the shader. And then lighting, just two lights actually, just to. What was I using? Okay, environment light actually, sorry. Yeah, so did we use a map? No, just a. I think, yeah, just a sort of base uh, sky environment map. Then just a highlight from the side, just sort of, that was. Uh, yeah, just, just to sort of uh, peg out. Not just another wee bit of lighting variation. And then uh, the other camera, if I can remember how to operate it. Yeah, very, very simple. And then for the background, just uh, I just had a grid and uh, put a little bit of bit of noise into it. And uh, that's Bob's your uncle. Yeah, so short and sweet. Uh, yeah, thanks for allowing me to share this. And uh, all the best to you. Good night.